Hi everyone and thank you for joining us in the first video of this uh, creature creation course. In this video we're going to cover the sculpt of the, of the head and um, I'm going to break up these videos in a, roughly an hour each. So for this one it's going to be the base of the head and in future videos we're going to continue with uh, the torso, the arms, uh, hands, etc. So I hope you enjoy. Okay, before we get started, I just want to go over some of the uh, tools that I'm using. Um, if you look over here, this is pretty much everything that I use. Um, I use the clay uh, build-up brush, the move brush, the Damien standard brush, uh, the trim dynamic I use all the time, and then uh, the insert primitives, uh, usually I use a insert sphere or a, a uh, insert cylinder uh, if you're working on older versions of the uh, ZBrush. Uh, then I use the pinch brush and the inflate brush. And then uh, over here all that I have is all of my uh, Dynamesh settings. Uh, I often, I usually work with groups on and with project off. And then I just uh, change the resolution as, uh, as I need the the mesh to be more dense for more details. Um, and then just for the poly groups I have group visible, uh, auto groups and delete hidden. And then there's one more setting that I always have and that's under brush and if we go into auto masking you'll see this uh, slider over here that's masked by uh, poly groups. Now what this does, if it's on zero, and I'll just quickly show you what this is. So let's just group visible. So now we have two uh, separate poly groups. And if I use the clay builder brush, and I brush over them, you see that they're both affected equally. But if I go over here and I just slide this all the way up to 100, you'll see that it stops right at the poly group. So I can isolate which polygroup I want to work on. And that's really useful. And then also just one more thing is this uh, back face masking. Now this is very useful if you're working in thin surfaces and you don't want the, the brush to exert any influence on the back side of, uh, of the thin surface. So that's one thing. Um, let me also just show you, let's dynamesh this increase the resolution a bit. Okay, so the way that I sculpt is I generally, if if it's big surfaces, I would insert a primitive, like a sphere or something, and shape that separately, and then dynamesh that afterwards into the main model. Uh, if it's uh, smaller uh, pieces that I want to add, I generally just use the clay build-up brush, and if you hold Alt, you can take away, so with this I generally just start sculpting. Uh, what I like to do is just take down the Z intensity to about 10 so that I have uh, more control over what the brush does. So this is kind of the way that I, that I sculpt. And what I also try to keep in mind is to follow the contour of the, uh, of the surface that I'm creating. So for instance if I want to add something that's round, I, I work my brush in circular motions instead of just doing this. I actually make the strokes and the contours of the shape that I'm trying to create. And then when I dynamesh, um, it creates all that detail for me. But the big secret is, and I think this is something that, that a lot of people do, is now you have all this rough clay and people just go in, hold shift and smooth everything out. And that's not really a good idea. Because then you stop sculpting and you're just blurring everything out. What I like to do is use the trim dynamic brush and s smooth it out with the trim dynamic brush because then I'm not I'm, I'm still sculpting, I'm just, I'm not blurring everything out, I'm still sculpting. So, 
I can refine the shape a lot better than what I'm doing with a, with a smooth brush. So you can see that this shape is, is a lot crisper than it would have been uh, if I just used the smooth brush. I do use the smooth brush, for instance here I might smooth it a bit, but then I'd go in with the Damien Standard brush and also just make it uh, about 10 and get that detail back in. Now my now the sculpt is a lot crisper and it's it's more deliberate. Okay, so that's pretty much um, how I, I approach this, and I approach it very much like you would approach clay. Instead of uh, getting bogged down by all of the technical stuff. So if I want to add something, if it's, if it's a large piece that I want to add, uh, I add a primitive, like a sphere or a cylinder or a, a cube or whatever I, I, I need to add. Uh, very similar to what you would do with clay. If it's, um, if it's smaller pieces that I want to add, I just use the clay build-up brush, just take away, and um, the rest of the time I'm using the, the trim dynamic brush because it's almost like you're, you're, you're rubbing your fingers over the clay and that's, that's really how you would approach it in a traditional sense. Okay, so with that in mind, let's, let's get started on our model. Okay, um, we're going to start modeling um, the head. And before we get started with that, let's quickly do a few sketches just to see what the structure of the head looks like. So, let me just get a nice brush here, just a normal standard brush. Uh, Shape Dynamics Transfer. There we go. Okay, so in ZBrush we're going to start off with a sphere. And what do we need to do in order to change the sphere to make it look more like a head is we're going to trim off these sides. Okay. Uh, because the shape of the head looks almost like a triangle with a little curve at the back. That's the shape of a head. So if we keep that in mind, that the cranium at the top is very flat, and we have this little triangle here with a little sphere at the back and a cylinder for the neck. So the first thing we're going to sculpt is this piece here. We're going to flatten the top just slightly and trim off at the sides. Then the next thing we're going to do is just create a cylinder that we're going to extrude down and that's going to be right here. So in order to change the shape of this sphere to, uh, to accommodate this neck, we're going to take this sphere and trim off this piece here. So we kind of have that shape. If we just shade that in, if you see this is the shape that we're going to keep. Alright, so once we have that, this neck is going to fit in right there. And that gives us an angle of, of the mandible, the, the jawline, right here. And it, it's more or less in that little, uh, that little circle that we trimmed out, it's more or less in the center of that. So right here, we're going to trim that off. And it's also going to be on the other side. The next thing we need to do is extend this mandible to accommodate the face, to create that shape. Remember this triangle that we have? So we extend this down and extend this down. Then we have this shape. If we look at the curves here, that's, that's more or less what it's going to look like. So we've got, let's pick another color here. Uh, a red. So we have this shape for the head. Let's pick a blue. And we have this shape for the neck. 
And I'm doing this in two colors because this is our polygroups. We can separate these two in poly uh, into different polygroups and that will make the sculpt much easier. So we can focus on the face and then we can focus on the neck. Okay, so let's start by creating a sphere. And we're just dynameshing it. And then we just use the trim rec tool to trim off that that back part and to create that shape for the for the mandible. Uh, also, just make sure that when you use the trim uh, that trim rec uh, tool, that uh, it's going to separate it into two different poly groups. So you might just want to um, group visible just to make it make everything one poly group again. Then we're just uh, shaping a cylinder or a sphere. Um, it's up to you. There I'm just smoothing everything out because uh, once you dynamesh you get all those jagged edges from, from the low polygon count. Um, I'm turning on back face, uh, back face masking and um, uh, just uh, poly masking so that uh, I don't sculpt um, uh, over the two poly groups because now we're, we have the, those two poly groups. I'm trimming off the, the side circles there and I'm extending the face for that mandible to to fit in there. You can see that it's it's very close to the sketch that we did. Now I'm just using the trim dynamic brush just to shape in the the sockets for the eyes. And now we're just adding some basic shapes for the neck, just the major shapes that we that we need. At the sternocleidomastoid muscle, some of the deltoid muscles in there. And as you can see, I'm, I'm keeping everything very loose, very rough. Um, I'm not worried about uh, the clay looking smooth. I'm really just looking at uh, shaping everything so that uh, everything fits together. Um, and there I uh, dynameshed everything together, so that, mm, but now the head and the neck is one surface. And I'm just adding at the back some more of the, of the cranium, just to extend it backwards a little bit. Uh, if you remember that triangle that we drew um, with the little curve at the end, so we're just making sure that that curve is, is getting in there. And now just using the trim dynamic brush just to kind of smooth everything out. But it's not just about smoothing, it's it's actually sculpting. It's um, taking away and putting clay back in. And I'm also trying to create the planes of the face, um, make it, making sure that I that, that I capture every every plane of it. And the trim dynamic brush is is brilliant at, at um, making sure that you you get that nice flat uh, surface to capture the planes. Um, in the end, we're going to smooth everything out and make everything uh, seem more natural. But at this stage, we really just want to capture the planes of the face. And what we really capture now is where that mandible is coming from uh, that center point in the middle of the of the sphere that we created um, it's very useful to just go onto Google and uh, search for uh, anatomy uh, pictures on all the muscles and all the, especially if you go into Google and you just Google the uh, planes of the face uh, you get a very good, even if you don't know the names of the, uh, of the planes, um, that's not really necessary, but as long as you know that they exist and where they are and look at them in terms, uh, in the relation they have towards each, uh, each other. So all I'm interested in creating now is those planes of the face.
and as you can see I'm not using the smooth brush I'm only using the trim dynamics brush and here I'm just adding some more in the cranium seeing that that's a little bit flat I'm looking at it from every angle and it's okay if your model uh, looks like an alien at this point it's supposed to look that way um, don't go into details right at the start I'm just using the uh, Damien standard brush just to make little tick marks for myself just to know um, what the proportions are of where the where the nose is and where the mouth is going to be and I'm just shaping what you're gonna see I'm gonna use three parts and I'm uh, just shaping the the septum of the nose at this point and then then I'm adding two more spheres for the sides. Now there are different polygroups so I can shape them individually. Just making sure I'm getting that shape right. And then I'm getting back to the center again. And this is where that mask by polygroup really comes in handy because I can I can really sculpt on each individual piece without worrying that I'm going to destroy the other any of the other polygroups. And sculpting is really just about the shapes, the real basic shapes of everything. Circles, spheres, cylinders. And if you can if you can look at structure in, in terms of that you're going to go a long way into sculpting things that are really realistic. I've just dynameshed everything together and now I have a complete nose. Instead of getting into trying to extrude a nose from the from the main mesh, um, I, I can create the nose as a separate piece of geometry and just put it in there. And what I'm seeing now is uh, the um, the orbital recess needs to be a lot deeper. I'm trying to shape that into uh, getting some room for the nose. And always look at your model from every single angle all of the angles, as soon as you uh, change something, as soon as you build something, look at it from all angles, make sure that it looks right from every angle. Now here I'm trying to um, I'm trying to create a, a mouth cavity and uh, this technique really failed and I kept it recording because sometimes it's good to see where, where you go wrong. Um, my idea was to create something of a mouth cavity and bring the upper lip down and bring the lower lip up and trying to meet them and uh, it just didn't work uh, the way I wanted it to work. Um, if you're creating a mouth cavity it's always good to uh, model the character with the mouth open. Uh, so dropping the jaw and, and modeling the whole character as if the mouth is open instead of trying to uh, squish them together. So you're going to see I'm going to abort this idea in a little while. Uh, it's, it's just not working. It's very difficult to work in, a, in, in such a confined space. What I usually like to do, especially if, if, if it's a character that's going in for retopology for, for uh, animation that's going to be rigged uh, for facial expressions, um, I model the, the jaw open and that way I can get in there and, and model on the inside of the mouth and uh, get the throat right and I have a lot of room and, and then I can actually sculpt the lips uh, individually. But for this piece, uh, since uh, the character is not going to be rigged for facial expressions, um, we can just model the, the lips. So I'm just using the Damien standard brush here and just creating uh, the, kind of the shape where the lips part and I'm masking out the bottom 
and I'm pulling out with the move, um, the move brush, the move tool, and then I mask out the top lip, and I move the the bottom lip out. If you're working in a in traditional clay, uh, you use a knife and just just cut out uh, the top lip and and then start adding clay uh, to 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 shape that. And then if we Dynamesh, we've got a lot of resolution in there that we can add details to the mouth. And now it looks kind of weird. Uh, looks like those statues in, uh, on uh, Easter Island. And now just using the move brush again, shaping everything, making it look right, getting the proportions right. And the wonderful thing about um, ZBrush is nothing's really um, unrepairable. If something's not working, you can always just repair it. Now from the front, it starts to look... It's, it's getting there. And... I start adding the, the details to the to the lips. Now I just want to add this little piece here uh, just to explain uh, how the lips work. Um, if we look at the lips, we've got this uh, kind of uh, central line where the lips part and then for the top lip we've got this, um, it's actually a, a there are three parts for the top lip and two parts for the bottom lip. So if we look at it from the from the front, that would be the center part, and we've got two parts on either side that make up the top lip. Like that, and for the bottom lip, we've got two parts going this way and this way, and that would be the parting of the lips. So you can see it's almost like a like a puzzle. They fit into each other, and that would be the lips. So if we look at it in perspective, you see that piece, a little bit of that piece, and for the bottom piece, there we go. And those are your lips. So let's pick a color here. That will be one piece. Those would be the two pieces on the side, and use two colors here. That's one piece here, and color. That's one piece there. So if we keep those pieces in mind, and remember that the lips slot into each other like a puzzle, um, then th that that's what uh, really makes your lips realistic. It's not flat at the top and flat at the bottom. So you can see that I've just roughed in those pieces, um, just more or less just guidelines for myself of where they would be. You can see the two pieces at the top, uh, at the bottom, and the three pieces at the top. But the shape is all off, so I'm using the move brush just to shape the mouth again, get it into place, and now it's starting to look like like a real mouth. And you just have to be careful not to um, bring out the bottom lip too far. If you bring it out too far, um, it's not going to look right. Uh, you're going to look like you've got an undershot, uh, and it's it's just going to look weird. Um, the top lips and the bottom lips are more or less uh, parallel to each other. It's the shape of the face that's at at an angle. Uh, so the the bony structure underneath. That's what, what really gives that angle to the, to the lips. It's not the lips themselves. So now I'm just um, putting in, uh, with the Damien Standard Brush, I'm, I'm constantly putting in guides for myself of where um, certain areas start and where certain areas end. 
So there again, I'm just adding some uh, some guides for myself of where where the lip ends, and I see that there's I, I can take away some clay there just to get that fleshiness of the bottom lip uh, just right. And like I've said, um, it's really useful just to uh, Google some anatomy pictures just to look at what uh, what the structures of the, uh, of the muscles are underneath. It's really not necessary to to learn the names of the, of the muscles. Um, it's um, that's really not necessary but but what is necessary is for you to know um, where they are and that they do exist. Um, there are so many muscles that make up the face um, because if we look at how complex our, our, our expressions are um, just around our mouths and um, the way we can move our eyes and, and our, our cheeks and um, it's very very complex and there are so many muscles that are involved in making those expressions um, and the structure of the face is really dictated by um, um, by that underlying structure underneath the skin so um, in, in, in a way we can say that the that the face is not just skin deep <laughs> it's it's really all of those structures underneath that make up uh, that make up the face, that make that specific look um, uh, realistic. So I'm just trying to to add some indentation. I want to part the lips slightly. Um, this is really just an artistic choice. And I'm also uh, I'm not worried about my dynamesh uh, destroying some of the details that I'm doing. Um, you can see in there that the Dynamesh is, uh, is kind of bleeding everything together. At this stage, I'm not worried about that. I'm really just worried about the structure. So I'm trying to get those, those puzzle pieces of the, of the lips, getting them really, getting them in there, getting them right, making sure that they, that they look like they can slot into each other. Getting some volume in there, Sh keep on shaping, keep on changing. And uh, from this profile, you can really see that the lips are virtually parallel to each other. The one is not sticking out from the other. And there, again, I, I tried something with the corner of the mouth. Didn't work. Just get rid of it. Um, don't, don't bleed something until you get something and something uh, and start again try something else that's that's the beauty of sculpting you can always try something else now, I've been spending quite a lot of time on the on the lips and uh, I always catch myself that I'm that I'm noodling on a, uh, on a specific spot and I think that's that's natural um, if you're doing something that you that you like you kind of want to get that perfect and you, you um, but you have to remind yourself that you shouldn't really do that um, uh, look at the structure of, of, of what you're modeling instead of uh, the, the tiny little details so if you catch yourself doing that just move on to another part of the face or the body or whatever you're sculpting um, don't start noodling uh, at this stage it's not about uh, it's it's not about the details it's all about the structure so I left the lips alone and I started working around the mouth uh, getting that structure just right and see now I'm moving on to the cheeks and I'm, I'm, I'm just breaking away from the lips so that I don't start noodling so I'm working on the cheekbones again getting that volume right now moving on to the chin, something completely different again. I'm always moving uh, around on the model uh, to make sure that uh, I don't start noodling on details. I've been doing that on the lips a little bit, but um, uh, there are so many structures within the lips that you can work on. So that, um, 
I'm again just making uh, kind of little landmarks for myself with the Damien Standard Brush. And now I'm making some big changes. Um, my idea for uh, for this specific model is to get something childlike in the face. Uh, big forehead, uh, large eyes, um, um, a relatively pointy nose, a uh, little button nose. Um, so I'm making big changes now. So my my first approach to modeling is to get the structure right uh, in terms of a, a generic human. Um, and then I'd start making big changes with the move brush to get something very specific for this character that I'm making. So you can already see the, the difference in, in, in the look of the character just by dropping the eyes. I'm seeing by doing that I'm changing the planes of the face so I'm using the trim dynamics brush again uh, to get those planes in there. And here I'm um, I'm using the clay uh, clay buildup brush to get uh, the zygomatic arch in there. Uh, the zygomatic arch is the widest point in the face. If you look at the face from the front, that's really the widest point in the face. Um, and a, a big mistake would be to um, take away from the cheeks uh, because uh, a lot of times. When you're sculpting, you 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 tend to um, to take away uh, clay at the cheeks, uh, and really all you need is just to use the trim dynamics brush there. But what creates that shape is the zygomatic arch that is really wider than any other point. So I'm I'm taking away a little bit of clay there, uh, just to build it back up again. You'll see that. Um, that that hollow right at the temples. Um, I'm using the, the trim dynamic brush just to get that plane right. But it's really that zygomatic arch that's um, that's giving the shape to it. See there, I'm, I'm building it back up again. I'm using the trim dynamic brush again, taking it away. and looking at it from other angles, making sure that the angles um, really tell me that the shape is right. And you can really see those cheekbones coming out now. And it's not because I took away from the cheeks, it's because I added at the zygomatic arch. I'm shaping the neck again. I'm really looking for this, this um, elongated neck uh, that's um, with this childlike face so that's very specific to this character it's not necessarily anatomically correct uh, but it's that specific look that was going for um, something about the neck that you that you also need to keep in mind and that's what I'm adding here now is even though that you don't need to know their names or um, uh, know every piece of structure underneath the mandible there are so many lymph nodes and and structures underneath that actually make up volume uh, it's not uh, it's not a flat piece of uh, of uh, of tissue that, that that goes from the the mandible bone right into the neck there are so many structures underneath there and even though we don't really we can't make out each individual piece of uh, structure there it's it's always good to just go in there and and create some volume underneath the man mandible and what I did was I just used the uh, uh, Damien standard brush just to indicate for myself where the mandible is you can see it's 
it's looking really lumpy underneath the jaw and that's really what what we want because if we take into account all the lymph nodes and things that are that are going on underneath the chin uh, underneath the jaw um, it's it's actually really lumpy and then again just using the trim dynamics brush it's very similar to just in, in, in um, traditional clay using your thumbs just to rub out that all of the the bumpiness um, and again using the Damien standard brush just to indicate for myself where something starts where something ends adding those details so if we look at this I rarely use the smooth brush because the smooth brush just destroys everything that you've sculpted the trim dynamics brush uh, you keep on sculpting. You don't stop sculpting. You keep creating. I want to add some more structure over there. I'm keeping in mind that the uh, that the clavicles is going to uh, is going to come out there somewhere if we start working on the torso. Um, even though this is a female. We have to keep in mind that the structures of a male and a female is not that dissimilar from each other. Um, the Adam's apple, for instance, in a, in a male is it's mu much more prominent, but the underlying structure uh, um, of both male and female are exactly the same, and we shouldn't forget those structures. So I started adding that, and I saw a, kind of like a happy accident, and I thought, well, this is a fantasy creature. Maybe I can uh, add some more detail there, so I just use the uh, Damien standard brush just to uh, indicate for myself that maybe I can do something with, with the thread there. And here I just use the insert um, primitives brush um, or tool, and I just created two spheres for the eyes, place them roughly where I want, and um, I, s uh, I used a group split just to separate the eyes from the from the main uh, subtool, so I have two subtools. I'm just carving away at the face just to create some room for the eyes. And what I'm doing here is um, uh, I'm just masking out, and you need some resolution there, so I divided it uh, a few times. I'm just uh, masking out the center part, and I'm using the uh, uh, extract tool just to extract and you have to invert it, so I'm selecting again, inverting, and extracting. And now I have these two uh, semi-spheres uh, that, that I can add into the face for the eyelids. Uh, just make sure that, uh, and this is something I, I didn't do here, um, make sure you, you group visible because it's going to create uh, several polygroups for you where you extract it. And uh, if you have a group, uh, mask by grouping on, it's going to make it real tough to, to, to work with. Okay, and there... Um, grouping the visible and <laughs> okay now we have these uh, two uh, funny shapes and I'm just grouping uh, the top lids and the bottom lids separately so that I can work with the top and, and the bottom separately and it's still a separate subtool now I'm shaping the eyes and um, when shaping the eyes um, it's good to remember that the top lid is not that far up uh, because um, at any point the the iris of the eyes are always covered almost halfway by the top lid it's really the bottom lid that that's really coming down to make make the the shape of the eye okay so I want to come in here and um, explain the eye really quickly um, if we look at this uh, at the sphere, that's going to be the eyeball. Um, the top lid. Or let's start at the bottom lid. I'm going to do it kind of like in a three-quarter view. Um, the 
bottom lip really wraps around that sphere. And it's going down really low. So if we look at this shape here, it's almost like a triangle. And that's going to be the bottom part, that fleshy bit at the bottom of the lid. And this is obviously going to be our cheekbones coming down here and our nose over here. So it's really the, the bottom lid that's coming down instead of the top lid. The top lid is really staying into place half, not, not really halfway, so almost like a third, third of the way. And that's going to be the shape of the top lid. And the rest is going to be covered by lashes and those nice things. But um, the, uh, the iris of the eye, if we look, is really covered by the top lid, not the bottom lid. Add some pupil in there. Shade it a bit. And we have we also have this fleshy bit at the top of the eyelid. But that's really because we've got a nice fleshy bit of the brow coming coming down over this part here. And we've got a fleshy bit here. And this is the only place that's going to have an indentation. Because from here, we've got flesh coming over here, and this is going to be the cheekbones. And the, the eyebrows are going to go almost like in a, in a tent shape in this direction. So that's going to be the structure of the eye. So what's really nice about this is now I can use the move brush just to get that shape right. Now, you have to keep in mind when looking at this is I'm trying to create an eye that doesn't really look human. Um, I'm trying to sculpt something that looks almost fish-like. Um, these round, almost alien uh, type of eyes that are really far apart. Um, there's just something that's off on the on the eyes it's not quite human and um, this was done deliberately for this character um, if, if you're if you're doing something that's more realistic more um, in lines of what a real human looks like um, it, it might be best to to uh, look at some reference and see what exactly the shape is and how far they are apart and how big they are and their relation to each other because it's all about proportions but for this one I'm really trying to get something that's just not quite human just keep shaping and I'm shaping the eyes from every single angle I'm, I'm looking at it from the side from the front from three-quarters view um, trying to get the eye just right from every angle because it might look good in the front view but it is totally weird from the side And now I'm just merging everything together. And I'm, now I'm uh, building up that uh, that fleshy bit that we spoke of earlier. Um, when if, if if you take a normal human and you kind of uh, shave off the eyebrows, you have a default sad expression. So. That fleshy bit at the side um, comes down at an angle. So I'm trying to get that fleshy bit in now. Still in separate polygroups so that I don't touch the eyelids. I'm just building up the, the head now. You can see I'm working really rough and getting that shape in using the trim dynamic 
uh, to shape it, making fine tunes with the move brush. I'm working on that fleshy bit on the inside, making that indentation. And because the eyes are so far apart, it's, it's, it was really difficult to get that indentation just right. Um, in, uh, if, if, if the eyes are a bit closer, it, it feels more natural, the flow from the, from the bridge of the nose into the corner of the eye. But uh, in this case, because the eyes were so far apart, um, it was really a, a bit of finessing just to get that, that angle right. So I'm just uh, using the trim dynamics just to shape that fleshy bit of the side, getting that indentation just right. And you might experience that when you're working with the orbit of the eye, um, you immediately change the expression of the character. Uh, a moment ago when, when she didn't have eyes, um, she was kind of expressionless and now that we've started working on it, um, she kind of looks angry. Um, that's natural. Uh, you're gonna you're gonna start getting expressions in there, and we're gonna fix that um, in a bit. Um, it's just because you're you're starting to work on areas of the eye, and because the other structures are not um, uh, slotting in yet, you start getting angry expressions. Or, but as long as the structures are there, uh, you can always change uh, change uh, anything on the skull. And again, I'm uh, now just using the Damien Standard Brush just to add some of those details and getting those those edges just right. I'm not worried about the eyebrows at this point. I'm just worried about getting the shape of those eyes uh, perfect. I'm not worried about any details. Um, if if some details slip in, it's just because I'm using the Damien Standard Brush just to indicate for myself where where the edges of those structures lie. And some of them will uh, remain and others uh, will be sculpted out. So I'm adding that triangular fleshy bit at the bottom of the eyelid. And just making sure that they, that they um, flow into, into those cheekbones. You can almost see the shade there, it makes a nice triangle. Uh, what I like to do uh, with the Damien Standard Brush is just to uh, kind of make a line just at the edge of the, of the eye, eyelid, um, uh, just to kind of secure that, that ridge. And um, if the mesh doesn't have enough resolution at this point, I'm not too worried about it. Um, we will get an opportunity to to add all of those details. And I'm catching myself again noodling at the eyes, so I s decided, well, just stop there and move on to something else. So I'm starting with the nose, and I'm using the Damien Standard Brush just to indicate for myself uh, where the structures lie. Um, so it's looking really rough now. Um, just shaping everything, making sure everything looks right. And there's a there's a slight widening of the of the septum of the of the nose at the base, uh, where it gets into the filtrum. So I'm also just sculpting that in, and I'm also just making a Damien Standard Brush ridge right where the uh, where the cartilage and the bone separate. It's not going to be in the final sculpt, uh, but uh, I'm putting it in there for myself just to know where the structure lies. And I'm just 
fattening up the cheeks a little bit, um, just to emphasize on that childlike uh, look that I'm going for. And something to be careful about uh, if you're doing a, a younger character um, is not to um, overemphasize uh, that laugh line. Um, it's okay if you do it at the corners of the mouth, but it's uh, don't get too high up on the nose because that's really indicative of um, of an older person instead of a, a younger person. So if you want a younger person, uh, the laugh line is really not that prominent. Um, it's more the, the the fatty tissue of the cheeks that's really kind of folding over the corners of the mouth. And there I'm fi uh, fixing the structure of the brow now, uh, get rid of that angry look. Um, so I really want that um, almost innocent look uh, for this character. Moving on to, to shape the bridge of the nose, I'm finding that it, it's getting a little bit mushy. So I just pick up the uh, Trend Dyna Dynamics brush and just start flattening everything and s start building it up from there. And adding more of that flesh at the side of the bridge of the nose. the ridge a little bit more prominent okay, I'm getting um, we're getting close to an hour right now uh, so for this part um, we're gonna end it off here and we're gonna continue with the face uh, but thus far I think that this this structure is really laid down and it's a good point to continue on. So I'll see you in the in the next video.